Hey guys, teardown time again. This time we have a uh, laser diode module. This is a 500 milliwatt module used in Raman spectroscopy applications. This one is special in that it has a very narrow uh, band of wavelength of uh, light emission. I believe it's less than 0.1 nanometer width. Uh, this was damaged at work when we were uh, testing one of these modules. This is about $2,400, so it'll be interesting to see what this module is like inside. This uses what's called a volume Bragg grating to stabilize laser output, and uh, I'll go into that a little bit later after we uh, open this up. This package has been laser welded shut, so I think we're just going to go ahead and mill the top off of it. In here we have a uh, laser diode on the left here. You can see the bond wires running to it. Uh, just after that, there are two collimating lenses. One that is a, well, they're both cylindrical effectively. Uh, this one collimates the, uh, first one collimates the wide uh, diverging beam in one, in one axis. The second one collimates the much more narrowly uh, diverging beam in the other axis. Uh, this element is the actual volume Bragg grating. I'll go into that later. And, the out and on the output here we have a lens that focuses the uh, collimated beam coming out of this down into the uh, fiber for the for output. Uh, there is a thermistor somewhere on this that measures the temperature of the substrate. There's a thermoelectric cooler underneath all of this. Uh, I, and this one here is the photodiode that is used for a, a feedback loop to maintain constant optical output power. This photodiode just picks up stray light uh, coming around the package, so the gain is quite variable and has to be calibrated uh, per laser. And let's get a few different angles of this. Hopefully you can see better what's actually going on in here. Here's a view of what's inside the uh, VBG laser module. On this side we have the laser diode. This outputs a very divergent beam. Uh, on one axis it diverges much more than the other. That's called the fast axis. Slow axis it doesn't diverge anywhere as much. Uh, the fast axis might diverge at something like 30 degrees. So that's collimated by a typically uh, barrel shaped lens. A second lens, lens might then collimate the other axis if required. That produces a collimated beam which then goes through the uh, volume Bragg grating element. The volume Bragg grating is basically a device that reflects one very narrow band of wavelength and passes all uh, other wavelengths, or to say partially reflects that very narrow band. It does this by having numerous uh, variations in refractive index spaced uh, periodically throughout the glass in, a, in a, basically planes of different refractive indices. And as the light wave goes through it, light of the exact frequency uh, if light has the exact frequency that the peaks line up with all the refractive indice indices changes, uh, basically every time the light goes through one of those changes, a small portion is reflected. So as you repeat this again and again, when the light is all correctly phased, at the correct uh, frequency or wavelength, you get a significant reflection, whereas if, you, if these peaks are not all lined up, they sort of cancel out and you, most of the light is transmitted. You might wonder how this actually how reflecting the light back towards the laser is going to get the wavelength we desire out. That happen, that occurs uh, with something called mode locking. And if you recall what laser means, it stands for light amplification by stimulated emission of radiation. That means basically that what's going on in this element is the, en the electrons in the laser diode are brought up to a high energy state and when a photon hits them it can trigger them to uh, spontaneously emit another photon of exactly the same frequency and phase. 
So if some of the light is bounced back towards the laser, the light the, of the frequency you want, it'll tend to stimulate emission of more of those photons, and you get sort of a cascade uh, effect, multiplication, and that effectively causes the laser to output almost only the exact wavelength you want. And since this is slightly transmissive, or somewhat transmissive at the wavelength desired, that beam then exits. And this that is a much narrower wavelength uh, peak than you would get if you, it was just the laser diode by itself. There's a paper I found on these uh, volume Bragg grating stabilized lasers produced by uh, this manufacturer, PDLD. Uh, there's a link in the description. It describes how these VBG elements were actually made. Uh, according to that paper, they're typically made of uh, alumosodiosilicate glass, uh, doped with silver and sensitized with cerium. And to actually create the uh, um, index of refraction variations, it's illuminated, the piece of glass is illuminated from both sides with a laser. Uh, this creates uh, an interference pattern inside the element of uh, large amounts of light and small amounts of light uh, repeating. And the glass is then heated up past its Curie temperature, 500 to 600 degrees Celsius, then cooled below that temperature, and this sets the uh, uh, index of refraction variations into the glass permanently. This is typically done on a large piece, a uh, large wafer, and then they're diced up into small pieces to be used in modules like this. And this principle of illumination for both sides uh, with a laser is uh, what's basically used in holography to make holograms, so it's a similar technique. The entire module sits on a thermoelectric cooler that's used to stabilize the temperature of the entire setup. Because as the temperature varies, it tends to cause the wavelength to vary because the grating expands and contracts and the uh, optics move around. And apparently the alignment of the VBG element is extremely critical because if it doesn't reflect the light back at exactly the right angle, it'll lose this mode locking and the uh, wavelength stabilization will stop working. I hope you found this teardown of the laser module interesting don't often get to see what's inside these really expensive modules like this. Anyway, thanks for watching.